Hey, I'm Friendly Baron, and this is another episode of my series covering some of the weird mechanics in GTA 5. This video will first cover the mid-drive speed boost, which looks a little something like this. You may also know this trick by the name Double Clutch or E-Boosting. The E-Boosting name kinda makes sense, as you use the handbrake to perform this boost method. The name Double Clutch makes no sense. In real life, that is a technique having to do with downshifting a manual car smoothly. Early on, when people were first playing GTA 5, Someone used the phrase double clutch and it stuck, probably due to the Fast and Furious movie. For the rest of this video, I will call it the mid-drive speed boost as that name makes a bit more sense, and that's what I'd prefer the community calls it. But please understand we're working with 5 years of people calling this double clutching, so it's hard to change habits. The name mid-drive makes more sense as you are taking an action midway through the drive basically. Between 2nd and 3rd gears, release the throttle, press down the handbrake for a moment, then put the gas back on and lift off the handbrake as the throttle returns the full. This will make the engine bounce off the rev limiter causing you to accelerate and the tires to skid leaving some rubber on the ground behind you. This can save significant time in a short amount of space, comparing the car on the left driving normally and the car on the right using the speed boost. The mid-drive ends up a significant distance ahead after only driving for 15 or so seconds. I've got a controller overlay on so we can look at my inputs in slow motion. As the car is near the end of the second gear, I release the throttle, press the handbrake, then release the handbrake right after I put the throttle back on. The best explanation we have on why this boosts you is that the car is tricked into doing a sort of launch while moving. When starting from a stop in GTA 5, the car is given a small boost to help the player out. Most likely, the mid-drive works by giving you this same initial drive boost as you stop the wheels for a moment, but since you are already moving, the boost is amplified. That same mechanic is similar to how brake boosting works, as covered in my previous Weird Mechanics video, which I will leave a link to in the description if you haven't seen it yet. Mid-drives don't just have to be done from a stop though. Anytime you are moving from 2nd to 3rd gear is a valid time to hit a boost. This track I'm on here has lots of tight hairpins, and I am going slow enough that as I exit the corner the mid-drive can be hit. Though when doing this, you have to be careful to not use the mid-drive into another corner, or the already sliding rear wheels will spin you out. Here's an example of what it looks like against other players. I take a slightly inside line to get straightened up for the mid-drive, and am able to fly past my friends on the straight. If that doesn't already make it clear, yes, you can use this mid-drive in online, missions, races, and free roam anywhere in the game you can drive. You'd be surprised how often the YouTube audience needs that explicitly said. On my end, getting passed by someone else doing the mid-drive can be pretty sudden from the boost of speed they acquire. Mid-drives are easier in cars with more power, especially upgraded vehicles. The Pariah has a very strong mid-drive as its engine power stat is overly high compared to most cars hence its dominance in the sports class. Something to note though is that each vehicle is a little bit different. The Pariah's shift to third gear happens much sooner than example of Banshees. As well, it doesn't have to be the second to third gear all the time. Third to fourth gear, as shown here, basically never works in any car. However, first to second gear can work in some cars like the Banshee, though it's generally not as strong. But testing yourself whenever car you are driving is the best practice. My goal is to make this the 99% final video needed covering mid-drives, and give you the tools to experiment and clear up any misinformation that has spread around the GTA 5 community. Of those tools, we'll look at a rough graph of the gears real quick. Normally in a car, the shift point isn't as consistent as this image, but it will work for our purposes to show off where you should be mid-driving. Generally in GTA, in a sports or supercar, the shift point is around 8,700 RPM. When the car is near 8500 RPM is when you want to initiate the mid-drive, between 2nd and 3rd. To practice, you can use first person and watch the revs climb and time your hits. However, since most people drive in 3rd person, or at least don't want to stare at the RPM dial while driving, it's best to learn what the car sounds like when it's about to shift and base your mid-driving off that noise. Many different cars work with the mid-drive, like the Sterling GT in the Sports Classics class is powerful enough to allow itself the mid-drive. Supercars can mid-drive as well, like the Turismo R here. If you see the tire skid behind the car, it means you hit the mid-drive 100%. You have to be careful, I watched lots of YouTube videos of people making mid-drive tutorials, and they were all getting the sound of the engine bouncing off the rev limiter, but not actually getting the boost. It can be deceiving because when you hear the engine and see the camera change a bit, it feels like you are going faster, but side by side you can see there's actually no gain when that happens, and if anything, a loss from a bad mid-drive. 
The camera just changes because you tap the brake, and it's more jarring than the normal acceleration. Some vehicles like the Wagner need you to also use the brake along with the handbrake to get a boost. Notice how the rear brake lights up as my friend hits the mid-drive and passes by me. To be clear, most cars just require the handbrake button, so by default space on keyboard, right button or A on Xbox depending on your configuration, and R1 or X on PlayStation. The brake itself is needed for only some of these cars, like the FMJ as well to hit a mid-drive, which is S on keyboard, left trigger on Xbox, and L2 on PlayStation. You simply press the real brake at the same time you press the handbrake. The cars shown until now have been rear-wheel drive. All-wheel drive cars can technically get a mid-drive, however it's limited in use. The 9F also requires the normal brake to be pressed for its mid-drive to happen. It's very weak and doesn't spin the tires at all. In fact, you can see the mid-driven car only gains a single car length over the normal acceleration car, so this is not worth it to do in most normal scenarios. Front-wheel drive cars such as the Bigali, which is one of the fastest front-wheel drive cars in the game, also don't benefit from the mid-drive. Even with the best mid-drive I could achieve, you still lose about a car length by the time you are hitting 100 miles per hour in game. There are some very rare cases where due to elevation change you can hit a good mid-drive in an all-wheel drive or front-wheel drive car. This video isn't great since I was in first person, but you can see the rev limiter bounce and hear and then see the tires squeal as I hit a mid-drive in the Pigali. Then look around in amazement I managed to get it. This generally can only happen when going downhill or over a bump, so don't rely on it, as I'd say it only happens 1 in 10 times attempted. Some other uses of the mid-drive are at the start of races too. This schlagen on the right gets a mid-drive after hitting the go boost, and finishes the short 20 second track over half a second faster than the normal car. Drag races at the airport, everyone's favorite pastime, are where the mid-drives reign. You can easily outdistance your opponent with a solid mid-drive, or fail and get laughed at when you mess it up, which I am known to do. To give myself some credibility though if you don't know me already, I've been racing in GTA Online for 3 years and have been a top driver in the community for most of that time. As well, I am currently the world record holder of the single player speedrun of GTA 5, so I feel confident that my knowledge of the game is worth listening to. Speaking of the speedrun, we do have the ability to use the mid-drive during the run. Of course, you can just grab a stock vehicle off the road and get decent mid-drives. Sports cars and muscle cars are best for this. But, when playing as Franklin, we can use his special power during the mid-drive to cause us to get a massive boost. Similar to how brake boosting is amplified with Franklin's power. Almost every car in the game gets a boost from Franklin's power if you use it while the rev limiter is being hit in the mid-drive, which makes it a bit more lenient especially since we mostly just drive stock vehicles in the speedrun. I don't use this too much in the speedrun yet, though I plan on incorporating it more and more. Funnily enough, mid-driving is one of my worst skills in the game. I know about it, but I was taught wrong early on and racing my bad muscle memory is proving difficult. Another use of the mid-drive is for the drifting community in GTA 5. Now, most people probably know GTA 5 isn't a great game for drifting, and my footage here is not meant to look great, but it just gives you an idea of how it's done. In GTA 5, sliding the car will always lower the engine speed way more than it would in real life if the wheels keep spinning, so the mid-drive can be used as sort of a crutch to get the car back up to speed and continue your drifting. Mid-driving was once removed from the game actually. Back in October of 2015, the Lowriders update temporarily patched out mid-driving. It's unknown if it was on purpose or not, as Rockstar is always pretty tight-lipped. As well, the big semi-trucks were straight up broken for a while in this update too. So either because of that, or from all the public outcry from it being removed, it was re-added two months later in the mid-December update of 2015, and has been in the game unchanged since then. So again, mid-driving is boosting the car by using the handbrake between second and third gear. I mostly showed sports cars here, but some supers, lots of muscle cars, sports classic cars, and a few other select vehicles are able to get mid-drives. Generally you want to look for wheel-wheel drive vehicles. I recommend the Banshee, Pariah, or Blade as the top 3 vehicles to learn this with. If you need help, feel free to ask for clarifications in the comments, on my Discord, or my Twitch, and myself or someone else will probably be happy to help, especially if you have a video of your troubles. There was technically some faster ways to launch your muscle car though, with the new wheelie mechanic. I have a series of videos on those on my channel already and will link them in the description, but be warned, they were made over half a year ago when I had only less than like 1000 subscribers, so the quality isn't as great. 
Next, I'd like to introduce you to Wiggle Boosting, by far one of the goofiest things in the game. When traveling in a straight line, you can wiggle the car back and forth to speed it up. As I covered in previous videos, there is a thing in the game called Curb Boosting, but really should be called Suspension Boosting. Basically, whenever you compress the suspension in GTA 5, it increases the revs and therefore the speed of the car you are currently driving. We don't really know why that happens, but we do know that in some cars with very spongy suspension you can wiggle back and forth to create those curb boosts on your own, even on perfectly flat road. The Brioso RA is one of the most notorious vehicles for this, and the Jelly Rumpo is also pretty fun. Here I am keeping up with two friends, one of the fastest coupe in the game and the other of the fast muscle car. I keep up just fine as long as I wiggle around in a van. My friend Gio made a video on this back when it was found showing some speed differences. You can go up to an extra 30 miles an hour just by wobbling around. And suspension or tire differences don't make a noticeable change. Other cars that can wiggle boost I know of are the Mesa, Brawler, Karuma, even the Armored One, and the Dock Handler, which we actually wiggle boost in the speedrun. Something I recently learned is that in a vehicle, you can rotate faster by holding the joystick 80 to 90% instead of 100% down. Here is a normal jump where I am fully holding the stick and don't rotate backwards much. In this jump, I hold the stick only at 90% or so, and the car rotates around much faster until I lose control. I'm not sure of how useful this is, but it's kinda neat to know. I'm sure people who make stunt montages already make use of this. And sorry keyboard users, this one isn't for you at all. Another fun little trick is the instant stop, which can be done only in GTA Online, not single player. By hitting Alt F4 or the change character selection while moving, it will bring you to a stop instantly. My friend Serenely here uses it in a very tight hairpin to actually go faster than braking as normal. That's a pretty limited use case, of course, with the rain and all. Another option is you can use the instant stop to prevent yourself from going flying off a cliff as shown here, and can be pretty useful on Mount Chiliad too. Or the best use is to stop in front of your friends as the ultimate brake check. Of course, they will begin doing it back to you right away. Hey, I'm Friendly Baron and you just finished watching my video. There's a bunch of linked videos in the description of this one, so go click on those if interested, or subscribe to me if you've seen a few and like them, it helps a lot. Feel free to leave a nice comment below, or if you have a mean comment, please send it to my PO box so I can burn it for warmth in the winter while laughing at how little I care about people being rude on YouTube these days. Next video will probably be a references video for the GTA Casino update, or a biggest time loss in the speedrun video, or maybe a video of me eating bread for 5 minutes straight. Oh wait, I did that last one already. <laughs>